you know, the importance of having music taught in school, your mixed feelings about you're a teacher. Tell me about that. Okay. Well, for starters, okay, um, first we introduced to music in school, you know, being forced to play the violin in fourth grade. You know, I had, obviously, millions of instruments to choose from, but I picked the violin, you know, which is funny because four strings like the bass, but completely different experience, you know, having playing tests and all that pressure and, you know, being on different levels with the kids in the same room and being pushed so far and then having concerts where parents would show up and they're like, this is what you've learned in school, perform in front of, you know, parents you've never met before and your own parents, you're always nervous in front of anyway. And it was just crazy and I just started to hate it two or three years in, just wanted nothing to do with it, practiced less and less. I became a deviant. I was a musical deviant in my school. You know, I was doing well in all my core classes, but my music teacher hated me. So I refused to practice going there just to annoy everyone because I didn't like having it forced down my throat and it just didn't work. Just the confines of education and music I never thought worked well. And if I don't know. If I ever go back to grad school, my thesis is going to be on continuing education with music and kids that you know play the trumpet or the sax or the stand-up bass or you know chorus in high school. If those people appreciate music into their later years the way guys like us do, that maybe didn't do well in music in school but excelled in other areas, like when you can learn on your own, you know, and you can practice on your own, like whenever you really feel it's right. You can learn songs that you want to learn, not being forced to learn covers of Bach and Beethoven. You can learn to play Green Day songs, Nirvana songs, you know, and play with your friends and hang out. It's more of a social thing as opposed to an educational you know, so is task. So is there any value in schools and school instruction to begin with? I think there is if the instructors go about it in the right way. You know, if, if they say, all right, you're learning to play covers. You know, first of all, saying that alone would be excellent. They're not going to let you know that that's what you're learning to do. You know, you're learning how to play someone else's song. And then maybe instead of two lessons a week working on that scales and, you know, whatever musical piece you're going to work on in the concert, maybe one lesson for that and another lesson maybe composing your own music. Even if you don't know how to put your hands on anything, just trying to come up with your own noise. I think that would spark creativity and say, okay, maybe we'll spend half our time doing the traditional musical instruction and the other time doing something that's going to benefit us in the long run. Because how many people can go on to play in the, the Philharmonic? You know, a handful. And you know how many kids take music education in school that could possibly do something great with it? You know, small fraction of it. So I think there's definitely something good that can come out of it, but I think we should restructure how it works. How about the school system as a whole? Um, I think it's a, uh, as a high school graduate, um, <laughs> I don't know. School is definitely kind of a bummer. I think I'm sure for everyone it is. You know, unless you, unless it's kind of something that you're you're interested in pursuing. Like, I never really had a desire to go to college, and I, <coughs> I never went. So I think that being in high school and knowing that you don't want to continue school is kind of like you feel like you're just wasting your time. You know. So as soon as you know high school's over, you're kind of just like, all right, now I can kind of do what I want to do. And for me, it was it was doing a band. Like I well. Actually, when I graduated high school, I started working full time at Kinkos, and I worked there for like the first, I guess, yeah, four years after I graduated high school, and then and I quit to pretty much start touring full time, and I've been doing that since like for like, the last four and a half years or so. So like for me, like touring in a band didn't really require any anything out of that. Other than school, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to do this forever, but you know, I think that I would like to probably do something in the same realm when I stop playing, you know, in a band, you know, at least something music related. But um, I think that if you, you know, want to become a teacher, you want to become, you know, a rocket scientist or something, you should obviously take the classes that are necessary and continue on. All my friends that I know that went to college are all still paying off, you know, loans and debt and all Trying to find jobs, you know. But it's crazy because for me, if I wasn't playing in a band, the exact opposite Travis, I would want nothing to do with music. I wouldn't want to book bands. I wouldn't want to manage bands. I wouldn't want to run a club. Yeah, I wouldn't I want to work at a guitar center. I might take that back. I, kind of I wouldn't want to do any of that stuff. See, education, I think, besides music education, I loved. Like, I, I teach English. I love teaching English. I love, like, reading literature and poetry and opening kids' minds up to this, especially relating it to music. Say, okay, you know, you look at lyrics on a page for someone that you love, you know, you like, aspire to be like, and then you look up to, and you look at words on a page, poetry, it's a completely different medium, but it can work the same way if you look at it. Like, I used to do this thing, where it was funny, one of my lessons was, I would read lyrics 
to a poem and said, right, is that poetry or is that me just reading the lyrics to a song and the kids would raise their hands and not know which one was right? Okay, maybe you do like poetry, you just don't know it because of the music behind it. So I had kids explicate poems and, and music the same way, they're bringing the songs and reading to the class as a poem. And, you know, I think there are things about education that are great, you know, and that's, you know, why I leave this double life that I live right now of teaching and playing in band. And it was, it was better for all of us <laughs> in the end. The value of reading. I think people will read if it's on the internet. <laughs> yeah, and people write as if it's on the internet too, which is extremely unfortunate. I hate that. Love is L U V. There's no. The worst of my parents, who you know, like have, have long since neither of my parents went to college, and they've long since graduated high school, you know, and like they will be typing, you know, to me on the internet, and R, the letter R, the letter yeah. U, you know. BRB going and the number two, you know. Oh. I'm just like, come oh, on, like just take the take the extra two seconds and like, you know. Well, I I, I guess it's kind of my dad on the computer is kind of like. So I can understand him trying to short it, short it, but you know. But for like younger kids like that, I feel like it's it's kind of a shame that they're. With the like, I mean. I don't know. I guess I got the internet when I was like in eighth grade, so I guess that could have ruined me too. But like, I have to think that I'm not a complete idiot. Yeah, so many like kids just, now, like, they just hate reading. They yeah. hate reading. Even if it's magazines, they don't want to read magazines. When I was a kid, if people were in a magazine, we got in trouble because of bringing a book. Now, to get a kid to bring in a magazine to even read is hard. So all they want to do is, like, sit on the internet and, like, watch live stuff on, on YouTube or, you know, have a book on tape, things like that, which, which is helpful. I can't you know, blame you. Know, that's, it's it's trouble, extremely right? entertaining. I've, I've fallen victim to many oh, yeah, two-hour YouTube that's, that's, sessions. That's, that's <laughs> recreation. recreation is a totally different thing. Uh, but when these kids school, refuse guess, to yeah. be involved in anything other than that, and I feel like reading can spark so much creativity, because if you read something that's not in any other form, you know, movie or TV show, that, that can be inspirational for you to do something like that. You know, like you might read a short story and say, okay, I want to write something like this, or I want to write a song in response to this, or I want to make a movie of this, you know, and I feel like people are remaking movies in Hollywood that have already been made. Like, there's literature out there, you can make that, make that before you remake something else. There's another Incredible Hulk movie, that movie was made four or five years ago. So you know how many other, like, fantasy tales, science fiction stories are out there that could be great movies, blockbusters, but people aren't reading these stories anymore, so they're going to be lost forever. Yep. So until John recreates them. Yeah. I mean, where does this is help fit into the hardcore scene? Um, Depends on who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, that's great. <clears throat> like uh, you said the hardcore scene because a lot of people don't view us as a hardcore band. I think we are a hardcore band. Like I listen to styles across the board. You know, and when people say, "Oh, this is not a hardcore band," I think, "Hmm, what are these people looking for in a hardcore band today that we're not giving them?" Because you know, I, I think a lot of people who kind of look at a band that, that kind of looks, you know, outside the box a little bit and kind of tries to do something a little different, it's kind of immediately they're, you know, viewed as, I don't know, just not a hardcore band. But and also it's sad, but uh, labels come into effect, whereas you know, a lot of people when we signed to Trust Bill kind of wrote us off, and then it's funny because a lot of the same kids <clears throat> actually you know, wrote us off and then they'll finally get around to like just checking out a record one way or another and they're like, oh, like, this is good, like, why do they put this off for so long? It's like, you put it off because you, your friend told you that you shouldn't listen to Trusco bands, you know, like, and it's, it's, it's a shame because, you know, if our record would have come out like Death Wish or Bridge Nine, you know, more kids may have gotten into it sooner or just in general, you know, and uh, I don't know, it's kind of, it's just a really strange, strange way of thinking because when I first started going to shows, it was kind of like, uh, I didn't even know what bands were, were on what labels, you know, I didn't yeah. really care. I, didn't I, just, I was like, if, if I liked the band, I was like, oh, Because I had cool, it on yeah. a tape that was made from someone else, so I didn't even have yeah. access to the artwork or anything like that. It's like I was telling you, like, like we were talking about in Montreal, how I was like, you know, I missed the days of going to see, you know, I don't know. Even, not even, not even that long ago, like I was telling you, I saw, uh, like, Hope Conspiracy early on play Long Island with, with Taking Back Sunday before they were a big band, you know, and it's like, and it wasn't weird. It was just like, oh, we're show. going to a show, you know, like, and now it's like, you can't, you can't mix things and, you know, it's yeah. kind of lame, but. And if you try, then people kind of yeah, you whenever you try and do something different. It's like, oh, why are they trying to do something different? Whenever we tour, we try and do different and interesting things, you know, and then it turns into, you know, just War. nonsense, but. <laughs> but we just, we just try to keep the ideals of hardcore, which is like writing aggressive songs, you know, having an outlet for all that, you know, anger and frustration that you feel in real life, especially when you don't fit in. You know, and trying to bring that to the stage in an energetic way that's like you know, enjoyable to watch as well as to perform. 
and that's what I always thought alcohol was. Yeah. And just cursing as much as possible. Yeah. Being straight edge. <laughs>